Check out that knife. Tactical Doodle has never seen the CRKT jump bones before ever. That's pretty cool. This is on camera first impression. You like it? Yeah, I haven't been liking CRKT's output for a while, so this is kind of nice. Agree, agree. I've talked about it on camera a long time. You've kind of been like a Sandals and Tevas kind of company for a bit, <laughs> and I can't get behind it. Tevas. They just have that, that thing, like not so tactical, yeah. outdoorsy. They've regurgitated a lot of the same design work over the last uh, years, but now, in the last couple years, they've done a lot of great designs. Yeah, and I have a lot of care of these posting dudes. You'll see them if you have not already. This is one of them, the crossbones and gem bones yep. uh, combination. Great blades. Pumping out boners left and right. Anyways. <laughs> uh, that's a ball bearing deployment too. That thing flies out, don't it's, it? Yeah, that's awesome. All right, not a knife review. It is a lever action review, dudes. Oh my gosh, Please the original do more lever action reviews, nothing. I would say the original assault carbine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, here's the weird thing. This is a Marlin 1894 44 Magnum, catalog number 70432, specifically chosen from the racks of Gunny's, the Great American Gun Store, for review. I did choose the 44 Magnum caliber in this one. It has been on my mind for a very long time. Here's the deal, kicking off philosophy views. Even today, knowing what I know now about a lot of different guns, not that I'm the expert, but I know a little bit about some guns, right? Yep. I would not feel underarmed with this gun. That's what blows me away. I would feel like this gun right here will allow me to sleep soundly at night. Yeah. Would you agree? Yep. First off, have we not already told you how much we love the 44 Magnum? Yeah, it's I just awesome. love that caliber absolutely love it so this has a 16 inch barrel dudes 16.5 to be exact when we chronoed out of that four inch smith and wesson model 629 and that was a federal 240 grain load we were shooting i think around 1090 feet per second out of this one 1630 so that's a fair amount of difference right arguably a pistol cartridge yeah it's a pistol cartridge shooting like a rifle out of a very compact and relatively lightweight platform, the Marlin 1895. Welcome to the Nut and Fancy Tactical Doodle tabletop review, not the bunker, because we wanted to show you the details of, first up, this beautiful gun. Beautiful. Freaking beautiful. Uh, so I'm saying I would not feel underarmed. I wouldn't. And if you live in a restric restricted area, what a great choice yeah. this is. If you're in a restricted country, you can't own some automatic guns. I'm sorry that you can't. It's ridiculous, but dudes, this 1894 gets it done. Yep. Gets it done. Yes, it is rounds limited. This is an eight shot version with that 16 and a half inch barrel. There are other variations in other calibers that will take it up to 10 shot. That's generally going to be a 338 special 357 combo. This is a 44 special, 44 Magnum, 1894. Which, if you're doing your own loads, you could probably get some pretty good performance out of a 357. Absolutely. If you tune it for the barrel length, yeah. I think a lot of guys that run these tend to know them pretty well. Right. Isn't that an old saying, beware an old man with a lever gun? Yeah, or the man with one rifle. So, firepower, no, it's not a semi-auto. There's not a ton of rounds, but man, these rounds are going to hit relatively hard. Now, the 1895 version is the 4571. Which would be We'll awesome. talk about that as the review progresses. It looks just like this one. It's going to be heavier, though. It's going to be 8 pounds. And it's going to be, I think, uh, as rounds capacity to the same. Six shot. That's catalog number 70478. That's the 1895 SBL. So that's going to be stainless steel laminated stock in a 4570. Yeah. Same look, different caliber. Two rounds less? Yeah, so this is an eight shot, that is a six shot, so it is two rounds less. That's right, and the 4570, 1895. But this review is on the 1894 series, Yeah. and that's gonna be, again, a 44 Special, 44 Mag, 38 Special, 357 Mag are the calibers that I saw on the website. And sitting at the top is what, TD? What is this beautiful, piece of gun workmanship right here. Classic old Marlin 336. Affirmative. In 3030. Yep, that we reviewed separately. I really like how that review turned out. We 
uh, had it paired up with a modern 336 and 3030. Yeah. And we talked about Marlin as a company, where it's been, how, how far it's come, what the quality levels are like. And it was mostly good. There were a couple of drawbacks that we saw in the modern production, but I said at the end, I believe I'd still buy one of those. It's cool that you can get something like that. You can get a piece of Americana that's the oh same as it was built freaking 100 and some odd years Absolutely. ago. Absolutely. And look at the bluing on that. Every time I see that bluing, it's just like, oh, that's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Yes, that is my uh, own receiver mounted Williams peep sight so we can freaking hit something with it. I would do it all over again. And I have a higher front sight blade on it right here, gold bead variety. So now this gun, this old school 336C and 3030, uh, I forget the year, it's a 1950s production, I think. Yeah. I mean, you're talking uh, 100 yard targets. If you're talking about a pie plate, no problem. No problem at all. Now, if we're talking, uh, and this is an interesting comparison. So here we have a rifle caliber 3030, pistol caliber 44 mag. You may be wondering which is my favorite. I'll say it right off this one right here. <gasps> Are you surprised at that? Yeah, a little bit. I love the 3030. I think it's a great medium powered cartridge. It doesn't weigh too much more than this one does. This is a six pound, six, in, uh, six ounce gun, the 1894 in 44 mag, eight shot. Uh, I still like this one best. I, the 3030 is such a pussycat to shoot. It's so capable. You can take big game with it. It's, it's more powerful, I think, than a 44 mag. I love it. So there's your answer. But the different sizes, the different uh, aspects of SAWC, that's an issue between these two guns. And actually a modern production Marlin 3030 as well. So if you're in the market for a lever action gun, that's, this is a kind of a thought process that you're gonna have to go through. Unless you own a 3030 already and you just want for a second cool to add an 1895, yeah. which I think will be most of the guys watching this video. They're gonna go, you know what? I, I love this and uh, I just wanna add it to the collection. But if you're just getting one, which one to buy? I would probably go with a 3030, dude. The, the price of the, the cartridges are going to be about the same. Uh, 3030 you can get for relatively inexpensively. It's a very common load. It's because it's a deer hunt load yeah. in the United States. It goes back decades. It can reach out farther. It hits harder. I think it's more capable than even a 44 Mag. Says me. But what do I know? Just some goofy YouTuber. That's your answer though. That being said, the form format between these two guns is, is different. This is a carbine, this 1894. Look at this, how short and overall length it is. Mm. This is a great anti-bear gun for a guide. Says me. It's rad. Says me, not the internet. I don't know what the internet says, but says me, I would pair this up all day long with a Smith & Wesson 629 or Scandium framed 329 if I was like trout, a trout fishing guide in Alaska. Pretty sure 44 Mag's taking down a polar bear. No, I wouldn't doubt it. If and I recall. I wouldn't doubt it. The 44 Magnum is extremely capable. Yeah. It really is. And uh, you know, compared to some other cartridges, we're not gonna talk ballistics here. You guys know the numbers. Or you can just open up a window in your browser and look them up. Uh, would I choose a 4570, 1895 over this for the, the, the this is just kind of theoretical what we're talking about as a bear, uh, a bear gun, I would probably go with this one. I would, the this is two lighter. Two rounds are a big improvement. You get two more rounds, and that 4570 is heavier. Yeah. So you lose two rounds. It's eight pounds versus six pounds, six ounces. I'll go with this. Yeah. And a 44 Magnum out of a 16 inch barrel, again, more powerful. Yep. Yeah. And, but over over this gun, a full size 3030 lever action, whether it's a Winchester or Marlin, this is going to be more compact, lighter weight. And actually in this configuration, so laminated stock, stainless steel configuration, it's going to be pretty rust resistant. It's beautiful. Pretty weatherproof. Uh, philosophy of use, bear gun, we'll throw that out there. Uh, you know, who does that? <laughs> the percentage is so small. Home small defense, ish. talk to us about that. Dude, TD. I feel like home defense, especially let's say you're New York or California or something, you no. need something that can't take a detachable box mag, or you just don't want to deal with it. You don't want to build a a surrenderized, you know, featureless carbine with the giant blade and all that. And deal the bullet with all button, that. Which bullet buttons seem to constantly go out of vogue. Isn't I didn't know all that. of that a moving target yeah. though? The legalities of a semi-automatic tactical yeah. carbine. It, one year it's legal, the next one it yep. isn't. If you get a lever action, do you even have to worry about it? The thing Not I really, for a while. I always wanted to see is Maybe a takedown pin in the rear that lets you use AR stripper clips from the top like a grand, but no one does that. On which gun? I'm just throwing the idea out there so huh. someone can mock it up. Cool. They still haven't done it. But dude. As a home defense gun. Totally. 
Absolutely. And if you do end up in a possible court or against someone, I would much rather have this yes. come out than an MSR yes. or something that has like, you know, a Punisher yes. skull on my dust cover. It looks like cover. it came out of a scabbard of a Texas Ranger. Yeah. It looks old school Western. Absolutely. In front of a court, they hold up a lever action and go, eh. This guy's he, old school. He killed six guys with a BB gun. Where I think people with a, uh, I think uh, people with a tactical connotation might have a rough go at yeah. it in certain courts with certain prosecutors. Yeah, it's just a thought. What I do we know? We're not legal as experts. We don't know what we're talking about. Uh, and there's no flash hider or muzzle device on this 1894. Yeah, that's about the only downside. Yeah, it should I have would, been threaded. I would say. Yeah, there actually is an 1894 and 38 special. I think it's the black stock version that has a threaded barrel. And I think they do a couple do special it. edition ones. I remember seeing a yeah. guy's dark edition. It was like black on black and it mm -hmm. had paracord on the, the big loop. Oh, really? That's yeah, because cool. he had it suppressed. He uh, did the MI handguard and it, Would you run a can on it if it was your home defense gun, though? Yeah, why not? That would be cool. It That's would the be way awesome. you got to dedicate a can on it. You can't be taken off and use it for anything else. It's got to stay on the gun. Yeah, but if my main defensive rifles a yeah. lever gun I, i'd probably handle it great home defense gun uh hunting gun you bet and there's a lot of jurisdictions that will allow 44 magnum hunting uh all the way up to big game and you can look up your local regulations what it is uh without rule of law gun um i'll be honest with you guys it's not my first choice because hmm. i don't live in a restricted state i'd much rather go with a semi-automatic sapper in 308 and if not that an ar-15 if not that an ak variant there's your true answer awesome. yeah but Awesome, Again, awesome. if I'm stuck with this gun, and here's the other part of the equation, I'm practiced, yeah, and I'm fast at reloading and have right. a way to feed it ammo relatively quickly, I think this can get the job done. Because my j primary job is running away. Yep. And how much firepower do I need when I'm running away? Couple well-aimed shots. Uh, know, 44 mag is amazing. And then last philosophy of use is it's just freaking cool. Yeah. It's just a collectible. It's just awesome. And everybody, by the way, who shot this gun and saw the 1894, what were they saying? Loved it. Absolutely it loved it. They so fell in love with it. To shoot. And it seems like it's like one of those lust things that dudes have. They go, oh my gosh, I've always wanted one of those. Yeah. Jardine said that. Josh said that. Wyatt loves it. You said that. I say that. Everybody who got in touch with this gun and shot it loved it even more, by the way. But it's a collectible piece and just a fun gun that you can pull out of your collection and just fondle. Absolutely. Um, so Marlin just did a fantastic job on these. And they seem like their quality levels, uh, judging from this gun and the modern production 3030, 336, they're back. Yeah. They're back. Not perfect, but they're back. I mean, this is darn near perfect right here, this gun right here. That's 1950s build, like I said. I think uh, fitment's pretty good. At least for the important stuff. Now we'll take us, by the way, to features. Let's look at it. So wood to metal fit right here. Uh, it's okay. I'm not going to say it's like stellar. I mean, right here you can see how the stock is a little bit proud coming off the metal. See that? Yeah. And the, the wood to metal here. But I say it's adequate. It's not custom, but it's adequate. I was talking actually metal to metal. Okay. Because I that. can forgive wood a bit more, mm -hmm. but... Once you start having integral frame pieces that don't match up, then I have All an that issue. looks great. Yeah. The finishing, the stainless steel finishing on the receiver looks really good. Such a cool color color. It almost out. looks like it's a uh, stonewashed. This yeah. is a stonewashed finish right here. Let's look at the barrel finishing. That's nice. What I would really like to do this gun, I'm just going to tell you, is be blasted. Really? Yeah, to make it a dark gray appearance, bead blast a sucker, just like I did, by the way, with your 1022. Yeah. So Tactical Doodle, speaking of black gray laminated stocks, which this 1894 wears, they are gorgeous. We have a lot of experience with them. We have a Mar Marlin 60, speaking of Marlin, yep. and a Ruger 1022 that I bought in like 94 for Tactical Doodle when he was a kid. And then years, years later, it was probably, I don't know, 2011, 2010, something. I be blasted that sucker yeah. for TD, and it is awesome. Cool. So now that takes on a dark gray, non-reflective appearance, and it still has the same stock on it. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. So as beautiful as this whole presentation is, and it is, I don't think you need to be blasted. I think it goes next level. And since this is a fully machined, stainless steel, hardened receiver right here it'll be blast really nice this isn't aluminum so the whole presentation is going to look the same i'd be blast a large loop lever which by the way this is a large loop Excellent. easier faster to shoot we loved so it so much better all this is look awesome dude 
If if I were to get one of these, I'd bead blast this sucker and put a red dot on it. See, I know. If I were to get one and then bead blast it, then I would go, well, I need one that's stock still. Then I would buy another <laughs> one. So then I, I'd probably you do You must have a lot of money, then, dude. Then 45. And then I would think, well, it was pretty cool bead blast. So I think I want to do one in FDE. <laughs> And they do tacticalize these things. Dude, I don't know what it... There's but, four ends for them, you said, right? That uh, Like quad ends or whatever. Yeah, I have a feeling we're going to see a lot more of them. Because mm -hmm. at first it was kind of a niche thing. You'd see guys posting it. Because I got like texts from buddies going, Hey, have you seen one of these before? You know, and it's your normal Marlin. Is it an 1894, 1895, yeah, 1894. or 336? They have it for both. So they can do either or. For all three. Yeah. Any, any Marlin will ever gun, they can tactical. Yeah, I'm saying the word much. tacticalize, which is hilarious. Yeah. But it's just an M-lock rail that comes right. up and forward. And so you have guys that thread the barrel or have it threaded already. Dude, once you have that and you start playing with it, that's a pretty capable little carbine. It is. Suppressed, it dot, is. light. It is. Oh, it is. We've already criticized this for not having a threaded barrel. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. Um, the magazine tube is fantastic. We had no problems with it. You have a stainless steel cap on this bulbous, well-checkered, laminated stock in this version. Now, again, in the 1894, there's a lot of versions. There's like uh, walnut stocks, I believe. Yeah. There's painted black stocks. They have other variations, and they will come and go. This is just our favorite out of the catalog, and thank heavens, Gunnies had this one. I was like, dude, that is awesome. I've been wanting to review it. And I know TMPers have wanted us to review this for a long time. Yeah. Uh, swivel studs uh, mounted on that stainless steel protective cap. Again, it should be bee blasted, but whatever. And I and love have that a real cap. one. It's awesome. I much prefer the cap yeah. to the band. Agree. Because bands sometimes yeah. give you problems. Yeah. Speaking of problems. Moving on to the sights. There you go. Nice sight. So these are express awesome. ghost peep sights with an integrated rail. Oh my goodness. Are these so great cool. sights. They are so great, TMP Nation, that I did not even put a red dot on it. Boom. How easy would it have been to put like a primary arms red dot, which we have? I, I was thinking about it. Maybe I should put a red dot on it. We went out and shot it. And I was like, this thing don't need a red dot. Not for the kind of shooting I'm doing. Out to yeah. 50 yards, it don't need it. Really, really excellent sights. So great sight picture. It reminds me of Tech Sights, TD. Yep. This aperture. Isn't that all Tech Sights? That yeah, awesome really. little family-owned business that makes those wonderful sights. I'll put a link to Tech Sights below. They make them for SKSs. 1022s, AK variant rifles, and some others. And I've reviewed them, and they're fantastic. It reminds me of those. So super high-quality sights. This is steel, not aluminum. Great sight picture. You've got a white blade up front. I thought they were Long aftermarket. Long sight radius for a carbine, by the way. What? I thought they were aftermarket when I picked them up. Because it, it seems right. so strange that mm -hmm. a lever gun would come with such effective irons from the factory. Well, see... We, they well, almost always right, run the old-school... Right. This is why we had, to, this is what I was going to say, This these sites on this one, the buckhorn leaf that was right yeah. here was so horrible that I had to get rid of it if we're going to hit something with it. That's why I pitched it, and now I pushed this sight picture all the way back with a drilled and tapped Williams, what do you know, a peep sight, so yeah. the same thing this has. So in a way, this ha these two guns have the same sighting platform. Now, there is, uh, yeah, there you go, look at that. Oh, and by the way, if you have these, Paint these flat black, dudes. Fight. That way you don't get any reflectiveness coming off your peep. I didn't have the problem with the Marlins, this one, the 1894, because it's flat black already. So one thing we did note, and it is a little negative thing, okay? Prepare yourself, guys. Here it comes. Something negative about this gun is this lever rail, this long Picatinny rail, which is 11 inches long, it, does, it did come loose on us. Look at this. Did you tighten it? Nope. There it is. See that? So Marlin should have Loctited it with blue Loctite. It's an easy fix, but Loctite manufacturers. it's not great. It's not great. Uh, also, this does add some weight. So what I, I would do if I owned this is I would pull it off. I would weigh it and see if that's important to me. Maybe it isn't. Uh, and if I didn't like the weight, I'd pitch it and I'd put an aftermarket shorter Picatinny rail on there. EGW makes one, an 1894 pick rail. It's about two ounces all. It doesn't go that far. It's about right here. Evolution Gunworks does one too. It goes to right about here. And guess what? For a red dot, that's all I need. I got a screw here, I got a screw here, and I got a screw here. So that's what I would do. This pick rail is set up for what, TD? Uh, beautiful, wonderful scout optic. Okay, that would be sarcasm from TD. 
And he's right. We Lord, don't like the scout side. Lord setup. Cooper has stated his demands. <laughs> we hate scout it setups. Is a we far always will. They're forward stupid. optic. They're freaking stupid. And back in the 50s and 60s when they didn't have good scopes, maybe they made more sense. But nowadays, yeah. no. So you have all this metal you're carrying along for yeah. that reason. You might make a... a Going back to philosophy of use, if you hunt hogs at night, you might have a short optic here, maybe a red dot, or an IR red dot yep. and an IR setup. So a night vision setup, it would make sense there. Or that would be freaking cool, by the way. Another set of Buis, a three by magnifier, <laughs> He's and then ridiculous. an EOTech. <laughs> and so it would, it would go about there. And then you could oh. have like that 45 degree three gun yes. mount set. You could have that. Yes, the 45 Then you could have a sling Buis. mount on it. Just see how much shit you can uh, hang off your pick rail. And then an Anpec 2 sticking yeah. on the... No, why would I buy that crap? I would get How the about, Russian one. No, get the, the Viet Vietnam Starlight <laughs> Scope. And it's like sitting this high and it weighs like three pounds. Beautiful. Our night vision's really heavy. And we still have yeah. one of those, don't we? No. Oh, the or Orion? Them. Yeah. They're all gone. The Zeiss Orion? That's... For the for its era, is decent. Yeah. It was it worked. impressive for back then. I just didn't like having to rig everything up to, uh, what was it, the claw mount? Oh. <laughs> you had to use the H&K yeah, like stuff. Yeah, like H&K mount. If you mount a scope on this, you're going to have to take the side off, dudes. That's a downside. Unless you want to have high rings and then your fat face comes off your stock, which is unpleasant. Uh, just a thought. Uh, with a red dot, I wouldn't worry about it because uh, depending on how high it comes up, it's not going to co-witness. I don't think you can do that. <laughs> but who knows? Maybe you get a red dot where yeah. the height is just right and you could do it. Okay, uh, standard hammer, it has a half cock position and also has a cross bolt safety, which blocks the hammer. So like us, what you're gonna do is you're gonna cock it, you're gonna leave the safety on. Uh, let me safety check this real quick. And you're gonna come up here and you're gonna try to pull and you'll pull it and nothing fires. Yeah, <laughs> We did that, that's because your safety's on. That's all it's doing is blocking the hammer, accessing the firing pin. Right there. So eh, take it or leave it. I mean, I don't like cross bolt safeties on it. This one freaking doesn't have it. And if it didn't have it in 1950, I don't want it to have it in yeah. the 2020s. Thank you very much. Loading, how was that, TD, when you loaded it? I actually liked it. And a lot Pretty of the smooth. lever ones we've had tend to right. hang up or when you're putting one in, right. start popping them out. And it's if you want to make someone look like they have no idea what they're doing, give them a lever gun when yeah. they aren't practiced with one and right. tell them they have to shoot for speed. If, exactly. And our technique always is to load, leave a partial, uh, or one of the cartridges partially uh, out, and that will push this loading gate down, and then you just feed it in from there. Again, the capacity is 8 plus 1, which I think is more than yeah. adequate for its size. For a carbine, man. It's, it's not like a 22-inch, like some of the old... It's 35 inches ones. in overall length. It's Sweet. pretty compact. Large loop lever, we talked about it. I think these are some sharp edges on here, dude. Yeah. Sharp edges. So this really needs to be uh, dehorned. I like to dehorn all this, all that. Uh, I might do that if I owned it. I might. I might. By the way, the trigger on this pulls. I didn't really measure it. I don't think. Uh, but I, I think it pulls pretty nice. How about you? Yeah, I liked it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, is it like match trigger? Is it as smooth as that '50s era 336C? Uh, no, it's not. But it could be better. I don't think it needs a trigger job. Do you? Yeah. There's a a suite that I saw too that guys were recommending where you can swap out some stuff. So you get like a magazine follower that Is helps. it like a parts kit or something? Yeah. And like an upgrade does... kit for your 1894? Yeah. That's kind of so cool So kind of, you get like a follower and a little trigger kit. What's that follower do for you though? You can kind of see it poking I, through here when yeah. you're empty or something? I think they said something like certain solvents will damage it and melt it so it's an huh. aluminum Okay. Uh, to take care of as, it. as we've talked about all along, this is a side eject uh, solid top uh, receiver, which is awesome. Very that cool. allows us to do this. I love the Winchester product. We reviewed it already. Yeah. The uh, the 94. It's fantastic, but it's not this. Yeah. It's not this. And this is actually pretty similar to the original Marlin products. Oh yeah. We gave a history in our 336 video. I'm not going to go over it here. Go watch that video. We talk about Marlin history, the different variations. But this has a new locking bolt. This has the two piece firing pin that prevents you from firing it out of battery. So they did have that in the original Marlins that you could actually pull the trigger and fire out a battery. Next thing you know, you have brass flying into your face. Uh, and it has a one piece trigger in this new Mar new production 1894. Very cool. Features, here's your almost full pistol grip on this variation in the black gray laminate. Really nice checkering on that. And then our pistol cap came loose too, so it's spinning around. Yeah. 
little something, just a little something. It's the little things that bug me when you're paying almost a. He was pissed when that happened. He, he was out pissed. in the field. He's like, "What is going on with this thing?" I am pissed, dude. Solid rubber butt pad. It needs to be taped with electrical tape as usual. And there's no Picatinny rail on the side. If that makes you sad, go get your AR-15. <laughs> I mean, come on, it's wood. You could screw in your own. <laughs> yeah. You now have some. Those are features, uh, mostly philosophy of use. Uh, how did it shoot? TD. I loved it. Was it a lot of recoil in no, 44 Magnum? Was it a pussycat in 44 Magnum? Yep. Absolutely. I kept forgetting it was 44. Everyone said thinking, that. By oh, way. it's 357. And okay. we're talking full power 44. Yeah. We're not shooting Buffalo Bore. We can't afford that. But we're shooting Federal. Yeah. We shot some Winchester 44 mag out of it and a pussycat. Easy to hit with? Totally. Out, Even at night. How about out to 75 yards on that small Lever Roy? It seemed like you were yeah. tagging that pretty good. Yeah, and he did. Was it night you shot it? Yeah. Yeah. It was like dusk when we had first started. And once you remember how the sights work, because in low light, yeah. it is a little tough to figure out where the alignment is. That's right. Is. I had to shot. I was shining the light on this back yeah. aperture so you could see it. So that's why I, I really would light. say uh, having a light on it would be nice. Absolutely. If you're, if this is going to be your working gun. Absolutely. Yeah, it is an awesome old school weapon. OSW. <gasps> oh, another acronym. I love it. It's a it's a traditional weapon put in a serious purpose. It is. I love it. Yeah. Um, accuracy wise, I don't have paper to show you. I don't know where it went, but I think I have video. I'll just show you. I would say the groups were actually pretty good. Yeah. For at fifty yards, I believe that's the distance we shot it at with iron sights. You put a red dot on it. You put a one to six power scope. It's going to be even better. A one to six would be cool. One to six would be awesome. Smoking. And and with one to six, then I would leave this Picatinny rail on it. Yeah. One to six, it'd add a little bit of weight, but you put one of those Vortex Strike Eagles one to six, they're only 299 yeah. bucks and it's illuminated. Yep. Dude, you got an awesome hog gun and you can find a way to mount, you're, you're, you're kidding, but you could do that. You can mount, mount your uh, light off here. I'm not totally. They have a 45 it, degree man. mount that you could put a really powerful light here. Yeah. Maybe even an IR setup. Oh, that's sick. If you have one that's of those sick. weird uh, Russian and peck, whatever they are, illuminators, uh, it's okay. I'm sorry. Guys oh. are paying insane amounts, like two grand. Guys for a are always laser asking illuminator. Me about night vision. I just say it's yeah. too freaking expensive. It takes a lot of battery battery power, unless yeah. it's a passive system, which don't work very good. Not so much. So I say save your money. The chances of you using it are very slim to none. You can spend your money a lot wiser. I was just laughing at the dude. We got a group buy. You want to get it? It's sweet. It's what the Russians use. How much? Eighteen hundred dollars. Like that's a group buy. Uh, I won't say it's like completely horrible to get that, but it, for someone who has a ton of money, I say rock on, dude. Yeah. The watch for the review, by the way, is a G100 or G110. I forget with a nut and fancy hands modification. It's just a simple black. There you go, dudes. Love it. Love it. Love it. And this is a beautiful cold steel with some spots on it because it has kind of, I don't know, tarnished over time. I think I've reviewed this one, mm. I think. Super cool. In the background is what, TD? What plane is this? It's a B-17. It's a famous B-17, which one? The, oh, that's Memphis Bell. That's correct. Tell from the legs. It's the Memphis Bell F model, B17F Memphis Bell with nose art. If I bring it up too close to camera, you're not going to see lights because uh, our lighting is on the table. Really cool model. 1 to 200 scale, I believe. Look at that. Memphis Bell making an appearance cool. in a Marlin tabletop. It's really interesting reading about awesome. the philosophy back then. On um, what? B17s? Yeah, just the design process. The bomber will always get through. Well, I'll tell you what, we lost a lot of boys in that campaign, but it was daylight bombing that won the war flat out. It killed their fuel supplies, killed their industrial capacity. There you go. Getting on one of those rabbit hole jaunts, uh, I'll prevent it. By the way, uh, did we mention how cool this gun is? I was. I in mean, fact, it's so cool, it's been featured in movies. You're going to see a lot more of these. I think guys have kind of uh, filled the squares when it comes to tactical. Right. So then right. they start looking. Uh -huh. And I, I noticed because it was that Jurassic Park one, the first reboot or whatever that came out, the guy was rocking, I'm pretty sure this exact model, right? It was an 1895, 1870, and he was hunting this. Yeah. Well, he had it as a defensive gun against a T Rex. Yeah. <laughs> Which. And, and when it came through the roof, he didn't even shoot at it. I yeah. was like, I wanted to crawl through the screen and slap him in the face. I'm like, you had that cool Marlin. Crank some rounds. Say in comment if you agree. 
It was an 1895 and 4570. It looks just like this. Yeah, it's we were talking about it earlier. See, that's that dark one. That's yeah. Cool. So that's a 4570. A little too much. And I paracord. think Marlin, by the way, has done a great job of keeping the 4570 cartridge a lot alive, yeah. along with Uberti. Uberti does some cowboy action shooting guns like the sporting rifle, the 1876 Centennial. Actually, that's a 4575 that Uberti does. I thought this was pretty cute. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Hunting T-Rex. That's pretty cool. Well done. But oddly enough, while we mention it, the best movie to star one of our beautiful Marlins, what oh, was it? Uh, Wind River. Yep. Wind River, and it was uh, Jeremy Renner. I can't remember. Yeah, it's, it's actor, Renner. And he comes off the snowmobile, and he <laughs> yeah. shoots the bad guys, and that's a whole discussion, who was bad and who was good. But he shoots the bad guys with an 1895 4570 looking yep. just like this. That is a great scene. I'm, if I remember right, it shows him doing his loads, too. So he's yeah. setting them up, and he's he's like a Earlier. big game hunter or something. Yeah, so he's carrying yeah. the 4570 for anti-bear or something, yeah. right? And he ends up using it. Very cool. Blows right through the double wide into the bad guys. Who I, are totally tacticalized. They yeah, got everything in carrying four sixteens. Apparently the uh, the old 1895 did just fine. You're gonna. I'm saying. I'm calling the shot now. You're gonna see more. I think Especially you see these more. tacticalized ones you come should, out. You should see more. We're one think, John Wick away. Oh, and also, what was that other movie? The the weird a Korean what movie. What am I? Yeah. Every Tell time I see these, we'll I wrap it up. I love just putting a plug for it. An old, well, not old, 2008 Korean movie, The Good, the Bad, and the Weird which is a retelling of the good, the bad, and the ugly that happens in, I think, 1920s Manchuria. So it's kind of this weird, you have like Manchurian dudes and Koreans and the Imperial Japanese are there and they're all mixing up and the, uh, I think the good ends up using his Marlin carbine for a lot of it. So there's some really, the chase at the end is pretty cool. It's sick. Pretty he much. showed me a scene of it and it's a goofy movie, but there are some yeah. really fun parts of it. Kind of along the lines of uh, anything just kind of a spaghetti western -ish. Yeah, it's a, Very spaghetti a love letter and it does, it's still Korean cinema, so. It's a little bit different. Yeah, it's going to be not exactly flavor. American sensibilities. Yeah. But when he's like spin cocking <laughs> the 1894. Awesome. And he was really or is it that thing. It's hard to tell which one he's running. Yeah. Still cool though. Still cool. Spin cool cocking. movie gun. Still a cool movie gun. Uh, we love this gun. It's uh, de a definite buy if you're in the market for a pistol caliber lever action. It's one of our all-time favorites, especially in 44 Magnum. Yeah. Again, you can get it in 38 Special, 357. And if you get it in a 20-inch barreled version, that's a 10 shot, Dude. 10 plus 1. And that's something. And so it's going to be side loading, unlike that Henry Arms H12 that I reviewed, which I yeah. loved. But I said, hey, give me a side loader. This is a side loader. So it's accurate completely reliable well built heirloom quality gorgeous first cool second cool that is the nut and fancy review thanks for tuning in thanks for being part of patreon and for subbing see ya